very warm welcome to the Perth Hockey Stadium here at Curtin University for tonight's men's Premier One round 15 clash between Curtin University Hockey Club and the University of Western Australia Hockey Club. I'm Michael Vent. So let's take a look at the teams for you this evening. For Curtin, let's give a special mention to the number six, the player coach and ex-hockey roo Nick Budgem. He looks set to return from an ankle injury and could play some part this evening. Number 13, Alexander Adoin scored the goal in the 4-1 defeat to Vic Park at the weekend, but did have a good game and will be looking to shine this evening. Christian Nettleton can be dangerous from penalty corners, the number eight also. Goalkeeper Anton Zickler will be wearing number 17. The 19-year-old German has impressed and kept the score down on numerous occasions for Curtin. For UWA, players to watch number 26, Laurie Bowden, scored a hat-trick in the 10-0 win over NC Raiders at the weekend, so should be full of confidence. Number 12, Daniel Timms helped himself to a brace in the same game, as did number 14, Campbell Geddes, so keep an eye on those two. Also keep an eye on the captain, number 23, Matthew Fisher. So both sides uh, out on the pitch now, just going through their final huddles, if you like, before the action gets underway. We did mention Curtin were in action in Narragin at the weekend, slipping to that 4-1 defeat against Vic Park, who won the inaugural Hockey Shield, and they will get the chance to bounce back this evening against UWA. Well, I think we can build this one build this one as the battle of the universities, and both sides will be desperate to pick up the victory. Curtin will be playing from left to right in his first quarter in their familiar orange colours. Curtin, um, UWA, sorry, from right to left in green as the action gets underway. As I say, plenty of st at stake in this one. Curtin are looking to break a seven-game losing streak. But it will be tough against a UWA side who have been in a hot run of form. They've won four of their last five matches and scored ten past North Coast Raiders, as we mentioned, last weekend. So confidence should be high in the UWA camp. Quick turnaround heading into this one tonight. And UWA immediately on the attack with Kobe Green. Played out to the right-hand side. The start's always crucial in these kind of games. The first goal will be crucial. You feel as though if there is to be an upset tonight, Curtin University need to get that first goal to give them confidence, give them something to build on. There's no hiding away from the fact that it has been a difficult campaign for them. But they'll be looking to finish the season strongly. UWA sit eighth on the ladder after 14 rounds. Curtin are two places below them in 10th. But quite a substantial 11 points separate the two sides. Curtin are on eight points, UWA on 19. This is here with uh, Cam Geddes. Plays it out to the right-hand side. Comes back in here to Andrew Smith. Under a bit of pressure there but does get the free hit. It's lifted out to the left-hand side. It's cut out there by Patrick Lawther. We'll get the free hit. I think Daniel Timms was too impressed with that. Our umpires this evening are Daniel Johnston and also Reese Young. Played out to the left-hand side to Timothy Adoin. Great to be here at the Perth Hockey Stadium for a midweek fixture under the floodlights. Conditions absolutely perfect. It's a balmy 15 degrees on this winter's day. As here come Curtin with Matthew Mercer. Look at the long corner. And an opportunity for Curtin to put some pressure on is with Matthew Mercer. Plays it back to Christian Nettleton, who lofts it out to the left-hand side to Adoin. Get the free hit. It's encroached into the five metres there. So it's hit towards the edge of the circle. Could be an opportunity, but just didn't quite fall for Edmonds there. Jordan Edmonds. Curtin will be pretty happy with the way they've started this one. 
It's opening five minutes. The two sides did meet in round eight. They just break off as UWA on the attack here. Golding into the circle, reverse stick over the bar. Will be a 16-4 curtain. First opportunity then, first sight at goal. So the two sides, as I was saying, did play each other in round eight. UWA ran out 5-1 winners on that occasion. UWA sharing the goals around. Daniel Timms, Jacob, Ep Jacob Evans, Andrew Smith, Tim Andrew, Aaron Klein-Schmidt all on the score sheet. Timothy Adoin got the consolation for Curtin. That's a fine looking pass over to the right hand side. Couldn't just be kept in though. It goes over the side. So Curtin will be looking for a rare victory this evening. They did give Vic Park a bit of a run for their money in Narajin at the weekend. He did pull it back to 1-1, but then Vic Park just ran away with it in the third quarter. Vic Park very clinical, to be fair. But Curtin did make a bit of a fist of it for large portions of that game. As UWA on the attack here. It's well brought away. Excellent play by Edmonds. Quite a dangerous situation for a moment. Edmonds has it again down the right-hand side. Couldn't quite pick out Lawler. And now UWA on the attack. Here they come with Jacob Evans. Goes into the circle. Still Daniel Timms that has it. And he gets the penalty corner. He was looking for it. It's good play by Daniel Timms. So the first penalty corner of this encounter. They played just over five minutes. And Curtin have some defending to do here. As UWA have an opportunity to break the deadlock. Just going through their plans for this penalty corner, UWA. I think it's number 17, Jacob Evans, that's gone down to the baseline to inject. Kobe Green is loitering with intent on the edge of the circle. As it comes in, it does come to Green, who sweeps it in. It's a good save by Zickler. Danger's not over yet. Edmonds, oh, it's Maverick Yao, in fact. Gets it over the side. But Zickler, as he so often does, coming to the rescue there for Curtin. Fine stop. Curtin can breathe again. UWA happy to go back here. Build up from the back before coming forward again. Spraying it around very confidently indeed, UWA. Andrew Smith goes over the side. It will be a UWA free hit. It's with uh, Matthew Fisher. Lifts it out to this left-hand side. Can't quite keep it in, though. Jacob Evans. Maverick Yao will play it back in from the side for Curtin. Well, Curtin did start the season, as we've mentioned on several occasions, in fantastic style with a 7-1 victory over Old Guildford, but not many things have gone right for them since then, as here's another opportunity for UWA. Kobe Green just dispossessed. But certainly, number one Kobe Green is a real live wire, but maybe Curtin can come forward here with Ryan West. Options to his left. 
Chance on the break here. It's with Angwin, Rhys Angwin. Turns well, gets into the circle. We'll get a free hit just on the edge of it. A good play by Curtin. Here's Nettleton. Plays it out to the left-hand side looking for Timothy Adoyne, who can't keep it in. Will go over the side. Maybe just a bit of a warning to UWA there. Just to be careful of the counter-attack. So saying Kobe Green really is looking a live wire for UWA tonight, the number one. There's Joshua McAvoy. Goes in field, but it's good play by Liam Sweeney for Curtin. They do wrestle it back, UWA, and we'll start another attack down this left-hand side with Andrew Smith goes down the line. It will go over the side. Harry Golding leaves it for Smith. Goes down the line. Alexander Adoin on hand to help out at the back. Maverick Yao will get the free hit. So still goalless here at the Perth Hockey Stadium at Curtin University. Played almost 10 minutes. Just like to thank our sponsors for making tonight's live stream possible. It's going to be a long corner here for Curtin. We'll come back to those sponsors in just a moment for you. As Timothy Adoin looks to self-pass, but the umpires order him back. Comes back to Nettleton. Such a key player for Curtin University. Here's Reese Angwin. Great play by Angwin. He's into the circle. Can he make it count here? It's kicked away by Yannick Mulders. But again, just a sign from Curtin that they're up for the task tonight and they're determined to end this losing streak. The sponsors, FMG, the new force in iron ore. Osdrill bringing more to mining. Danks Furniture, Tiger Turf and Cookaburra, hockey's number one partnership. As it's into the circle again for UWA. But as has been the case on so many occasions, Edmonds is there to clear it away. It's long downfield. A lively start to this one, still goalless. As we expected, UWA very much on the front foot. But Curtin looking lively on the counter. Of course, one or two anxious moments for UWA. Curtin scored just 19 goals so far in this campaign. Seven of those coming in that first game of the season. Conceded 45, an average of over three a game. But so far, they're keeping things tight here, as it's with Kobe Green. UWA on the attack. She played into the circle. Again, Edmonds is having a great game so far tonight. Mopping up the danger on several occasions. But here come UWA again. Into the circle it goes. But it will be a 16 for Curtin. And tonight, they're managing to rebuff everything that UWA are throwing at them. UWA very much a team on the up at the moment. Got the season off to an absolutely shocking start, winning just one of the opening seven games, losing five and drawing one. But they've managed to turn the season around. They're a team on the up. They'll be looking to finish the season strongly. Probably finals just out of reach for them. 
Here they come again. Laying siege to the curtain goal. Could fall here to oh, Zickler just lets that one go past. It was Jack Lever such who played it back into the circle. Will be a 16 for Curtin. I say we could see the return of player coach Nick Budgeon this evening. And that will be a boost for Curtin for sure. Free hit for UWA. Again, in a dangerous position. As we're into the last two minutes of this first quarter, can we get a breakthrough? It's drilled into the circle. Nettleton on hand, and they'll get the 16 again. That's a bit sloppy from Nettleton. It goes straight over the side and gives it straight to Harry Golding, who self-passes into the circle. It goes, and it's flashed just wide. That was Jacob Evans. There would have been no saving that from Zickler had that been on target, as good as he is. Three hits for Curtin, who are keen to get on with things. Alexander Adoin, not going to get the free hit there. And Kobe Green now, raiding forward. It's played out to the right-hand side. It's with Jack Leversuch. Into the circle it goes. Could be a chance. It's blocked by Zikla. But it had gone over the baseline, so it will be a 16. Jacob Evans again breaking into the circle. But UWA look a threat every time they get possession. Curtin try and get forward. But Corey Lutz can't keep that in. As we've got just 30 seconds to go in this first quarter here at the Perth Hockey Stadium. And so far, so good for Curtin. Nick Budgen and co. will be happy that it's goalless. And they have looked a threat at times as well. But there is still 20 seconds left here. Can UWA get a late opportunity? Zickler kicks that one away. And Reese Angwin will let that one run over the side. And that will be the last action of the first quarter. As the Hooter goes to bring the first quarter to an end. It's been an entertaining first 15 minutes, UWA very much on the front foot, but Curtin University looking quite dangerous on the break. For now, it's Curtin University nil, UWA nil. Welcome back to the Perth Hockey Stadium at Curtin University for this evening's encounter between Curtin and UWA. The Battle of the Universities is goalless at the moment. Let's thank our sponsors again for making the live stream possible this evening. That's FMG, the new force in iron ore. Osdrill bringing more to mining. Danks Furniture, proudly Western Australian. The Danks Difference, quality home furniture. Tiger Turf, three different systems, unfilled, dressed and filled, all meet the Federation of International Hockey's Performance Standards and Cookerborough Hockey's number one partnership. As UWA get the second quarter underway. It's with Edmonds. 
Played out to the left-hand side to West. Comes back into Edmonds. Good play by Patrick Lawther. It's a Maverick Yao. Alexander Adoin. Nice play by Adoin. Goal scorer at the weekend with a well-taken penalty. But here come UWA. It's with Daniel Timms. Out to Jack Leversuch. Curtin had a let off. It's with Nettleton to take the 16. Maybe one or two spots of rain in the air here at Curtin University this evening. And here come UWA. It's with Ben Ashford. Tries to play it through, looking for Daniel Timms there. Who didn't come off, but UWA very much on the front foot again in the second quarter. Curtin managing to keep them out so far. Mention that Curtin have had a difficult campaign and UWA also started poorly, but they did end that poor run with that victory over Curtin in round eight. And since then, it's been a big upturn in fortunes for them. Alexander Adoin is doing well there for Curtin. Victories this season for UWA have come against the NC Raiders on two occasions. Today's opposition, Curtin. Old Aquinians as well. Old Guildford and Vic Park. And most of those victories have come in the last six or seven fixtures. Finished sixth last season just outside of the finals and it looks as though that will be the case again for them this season. It's Curtin, let's play it in from the side. Get the free hits. Pace just slowed down a little in this game. With Timothy Adoin on the far side, who lifts it into the circle. Fantastic control by Cam Geddes. And again, UWA on the attack. That's good play by Patrick Lawther. Just to win it back. It's with Edmonds, the number five down the right-hand side. Looks to find Alexander Adoin, gets the free hit. Just keen to get on with it, but the umpires bring it back again. In fact, he's going to leave it for Maverick Yao. Self passes and then goes down the line. Picks out Liam Sweeney. Sweeney leaves it for Yao. Comes back to Alexander Adoin. He'll try and switch play over to the left hand side. It's a dangerous looking pass. It goes over the side and probably lucky that it did because Daniel Timms was almost onto it. And had he intercepted that, the break was on for UWA. It's Cam Geddes. To Matthew Fisher, the captain. Matthew Fisher and Daniel Timms, both in the WA under 21 team that took bronze at the Australian Championships in 2018 in Sydney. Matthew Fisher was the skipper of that under 21 side on that occasion. Two very talented young players that UWA are delighted to have in their side. Daniel Timms has looked a live wire tonight, as have most of the UWA players in fairness. Struggling to find a way through at the moment. Curtin, give all credit to them. For keeping them out. Good. Harry Pell plays it inside to Kobe Green. Easy to pick out. Sporting the white headband. Most of UWA's good play is going through. Kobe Green. Chance again for UWA. So with Harry Golding into the circle he goes. Flicks it back. Could be a chance. It's 
cleared away. It's not quite falling for UWA at the moment, but they're continuing to knock at the door. No one could get a touch on that. It will be a 16 for Curtin. They did keep Vic Park very quiet in Narragin at the weekend. It was the third quarter before the game burst into life. It was goalless up until that point. Then we got a flurry of goals. Could happen again here. Like I say, when the two sides met in round eight, it was a 5-1 victory to UWA. Could be just a matter of being patient for UWA this evening. And they can get the breakthrough. There's a chance the floodgates could open. But Curtin certainly have a resolve about them tonight. Defending doggedly. And are looking to hit on the counter-attack whenever they can. It will be a free hit. It's with Nettleton. He's going to lift it out towards this right-hand side. Here's a chance maybe to get forward, but Lawther can't quite control it. UWA are back in business as it's with Jacob Evans down this left-hand side. Reverse stick into the circle. It's cleared away by Nettleton. Will be a long corner. Sounds on this left-hand side with Harry Pell. Comes back to Tim Bunny. Into the circle it goes, could fall. Oh, and it's um, in the back of the net. And it will be Tim's who gets the credit for that one. Fired it across the face of goal, took the deflection. And the breakthrough has come. And it's Daniel Tim's that has got it. So you have to say that it has been coming. And UWA. Have got the crucial first goal. Can Curtin respond? They responded quickly at the weekend. We've got the equalising goal within a couple of minutes. Need to do the same again tonight if they can. Here's Maverick Yao. Self passes and tries to get away down the right hand side. Yao again. Crucial period of the game now, you feel. Curtin are to have any chance. It's with Nettleton. Out to Yao on the right hand side. Does well. Maverick Yao. And in by Reese Angwin. Comes back to Nettleton. Nettleton thinks about smashing one down the line. Thinks better of it and gets the free hit. That pass cut out by Carol Cronier. But it will go over the side. to say it's pretty tight in the men's Premier One this season. When you look at the ladder, there's a couple of huge games over the weekend with the top teams facing each other. And it could be an opportunity here for UWA. That was a sloppy pass and it could be 2-0 here possibly. And it's put wide. What a chance that was and a real let off. It was Ben Ashford who had his head in his hands there. And Curtin shooting themselves in the foot almost there. A real let off, fortunately for them. Ben Ashford somehow put that one wide. Conceding the second goal at this point. Would have been pretty catastrophic for Curtin. But UWA sense. They can put this one to bed now, but that was a bit of a sloppy pass from Daniel Timms. Goes over the side. But yeah, it was a big weekend at the top of the ladder 
over the weekend. Fremantle and Hale fighting out a three-all draw, which sounds a great game. As Tim's almost onto that there. While Melville hammered Old Guildford 6-0 to really tighten things up at the top. There's two big wins also for Old Aquinians and YMCC. Old Aquinians edged a nine-goal thriller against Westside Wolves, winning 5-4. While YMCC beat fellow finals hopefuls Wasps 4-2. So exciting times in the men's Premier 1 as they come forward again here, UWA. But Cronier stopped in his tracks and it's the free hit for Curtin. So Hale currently top of the ladder, joint top if you like with Fremantle, both on 31 points. Then Melville in third on 30 points. YMCC in fourth on 27. Oh, the Quinian's fifth also on 27, then Westside Wolves in sixth on 25. And here come UWA looking for the second. Oh, and he just couldn't get on the end of that. Harry Golden is a good ball into the circle. They're really knocking at the door here, UWA. Curtin managing. To keep the score at 1 0 as we enter the last three minutes of the second quarter. Here's Green again, gets the free hit. Such an urgency in UWA's play. Just keen to get on with it. To the circle, could fall for uh, Evans on the reverse stick. They get it away. It's with Lever Such. Curtin getting bodies back, but UWA come forward again. Golden. Good play by Adoin. Alexander Adoin to get it away. Only as far as Jacob Evans, though, down in the corner. And he will get the free hit. Curtin continue to be penned back. And it's going to be a penalty corner. Just striking the foot there as it was drilled into the circle. So the second penalty corner. Only the second penalty corner, we should say, really. Of the game. Zero from one so far. As we enter the last couple of minutes. And the penalty corner that UWA did have. They went to Kobe Green. Will they do the same again? It is, in fact, going to be Jack Leversuch who does the injecting. Zickler pulled off the save last time. Will he be called upon again? Let's find out. Just drilled in, but it'll be 16. Off target. On this occasion... Zickler's goal not really threatened. Could do little about the goal, the German. That separates the two sides. UWA will be keen to try and get a second before half time. I think Curtin. Pretty desperate to keep it at just one. Nick Budgen got a few minutes at half time. Just to try and regroup and try and come up with a plan to get back in to this game. Despite all the dominance of UWA, it is only 1 0. So into the last minute. UWA happy to be patient with their build up. Like to go to the right hand side again. Leave such is 
and acres of space over on the left hand side switches it back to the right it's a bit of respite for Curtin at the moment getting a bit of a breather but here come UWA into the last 30 seconds can they nick another just before half time it's a scramble and it is fired away and it's Ben Ashford who makes amends for that horror miss earlier in the quarter well, he's made no mistake this time and right at the death in the second quarter, UWA have doubled their advantage. As the hooter goes, it was the last action of the second quarter and this may really for Curtin, who really do have a huge battle to come in the second half. Do join us for it, but for now at the Perth Hockey Stadium, it's Curtin University nil, UWA 2.
Well, a very warm welcome back to the Perth Hockey Stadium here at Curtin University for this Tuesday night fixture in the men's Premier One between Curtin and UWA. As UWA just come back out onto the turf and they lead by two goals to nil. Both goals coming in the second quarter. Daniel Timms and Ben Ashford doing the damage. And the second goal, a real hammer blow for Curtin because it came just before the hooter. As Curtin restart the third quarter, playing from right to left now in their familiar orange. Curtin on the attack, but it goes over the side. UWA playing from left to right in green. Is there going to be a way back into this? The way the season has been going for Curtin so far, you'd suggest possibly not. If they can get an early goal, the fight back could be on. But considering they've scored 19 so far this season, shows what a struggle it could be. As here come UWA, as Leversuch plays it in at two. Bowden here into the circle they go. It comes to nothing. But again, UWA on the front foot straight away. Curtin will continue to plug away and give it all they've got, that's for sure. It's given away, comes to Kobe Green. Could be a chance here for a third. Zickler blocks. Be a long corner. That's Harry Golding breaking into the circle. They look such a threat, UWA. Green gives it away for once there. But Rhys Sanguin just runs into danger. And UWA have it back. It could be a case of very much as you were for this third quarter, as far as UWA are concerned. Keep doing what you're doing. Because it's worked well for them so far. Got a long corner here. Very patient in the first two quarters. It's Curtin sat in and defended doggedly. In fact, it's going to be a penalty corner here. Zero from two penalty corners so far for UWA. Can they make the third one count as Jack Leversuch goes down to the baseline to inject? Kobe Green there again, possibly doing the stopping. Harry Golden is in close attendance along with Cam Geddes. Goes to Geddes, who sweeps it in, Zickler blocks it. Danger hasn't passed. Reversed stick shot comes in. And Zickler blocks it again. Will be a long corner on this occasion. That's zero from three penalty corners now for UWA. They go to Geddes on that occasion. Nothing wrong with the shots. There's too many bodies in the way. Into the circle again it goes. Timothy Adoin blocking this one. Another long corner. UWA piling the pressure on. Did finish 5-1 between the two teams in round eight. UWA would love to rack up such numbers again if they can. Still a long way to go in this one. Another long corner. And he's keen to get on with it, Kobe Green. Plays it out to this right-hand side. Here's Matthew Fisher, the skipper. He's put behind by Nettleton. Long corner, Jack Leversuch passes it over to uh, Kobe Green to take. Let's curtain have everybody camp back as UWA come forward again. Trying to find a way through. Penalty corner. Can they make this one work? Zero from three so far. 
They tried various different tactics at the penalty corner. But one thing is pretty standard. That is that Leversuch will be injecting. Kobe Green, usual suspects around there. Harry Golding. Cam Geddes, who they went to last time. Maybe Geddes again, you feel. Here it is. Deflected. Be a long corner. Just coming off the stick of Dane Angwin there. It's Kobe Green. Self passes. Anywhere will do for Curtin. And they get it over the side. But it will go the way of UWA. Harry Pell. Self passes. Let's get down the left hand side. So nice to be under the lights in a midweek fixture at the Perth Hockey Stadium this evening. Have a nice little gathering of spectators as well who've come out tonight to watch the action. Hope you're enjoying the live stream coverage as well. As here come Curtin with a rare attack with Dane Angwin, gets it down the left-hand side. But Adam Pigott can't control it. And those are the opportunities that Curtin really do need to take advantage of. And they do get a chance to attack. Got to take them and put pressure on. Just a little bit of pressure there for UWA to deal with. As Alexander Adoyne had cut that one out. And the number 13, Alexander Adoyne, will go over to restart. Plays it to Reese Angwin. Both Angwin brothers out on the turf at the moment. And they've got a free hit just on the edge of the circle. This is the territory that Curtin want to be in. Can they make it count? Get to win a penalty corner. Chance now on the counter-attack for UWA. It's with Daniel Timms. Down the left-hand side, raiding forward. He's going to be able to keep this one in. Oh, it just runs away. Looks for a moment as though he would get on the end of it, but it is a long corner. And a scrappy pass cannot be kept in by Jack Leversuch. So Ryan West will, in fact, leave it. For Dane Angwin, the captain. Given straight back to UWA. Curtin, when they do get possession, struggling to keep hold of it. It's not helping their cause in any way, shape, or form. As the youngster, Matthew Fisher, self passes, goes down the line. It'll be a 16 for Curtin. They need to somehow try and find their way back in to this game. And Zickler just called on to pad that away. It's going to be a free hit for UWA. Goes back to Fisher. Tim, um, Daniel Timms into the circle. Alexandra Doyne can bring it away. Does well. Finds Edmonds. Edmonds nicely back. To Adoin, over the side it goes. And his brother, Timothy Adoin, will play it back in from the side. Tries to flick it out to the right hand side, but it's cut out. And now UWA on the attack. Again, great play, and it's a good save by Zickler again. Andrew Smith bursted into the circle, firing in the shot, reverse stick. Zickler stood tall and was equal to it. The young German, often the saviour for Curtin University and was again on that occasion. Here's Edmonds. Can Curtin create something at the other end? This is for Piggott to chase. It's a lost cause as it goes over the side. 
as we're in to the last six minutes almost of this third quarter. Still 2 0. Free hit will go the way of UWA. They're on the attack again with Jacob Evans into the circle. And it's going to be a penalty corner. Just striking the foot there. Of, I think it was Dane Angwin. Maybe it struck. Certainly Daniel Timms who fired in the shot. Zero from four penalty corners so far. It's going to be fifth time lucky for UWA. And we're going to have a change with regards to the injection, which will be Ben Ashford on this occasion, the number five. As Lever Such is off the park at the moment. It'll be a 16 for Curtin. As UWA make a bit of a mess of that one for once. Trying to pick out Edmonds there, but it was cut out at the back. Anguin keen to get on with it, finds Edmonds. Edmonds does well again, but the free hit will go the way of UWA. It's lifted long, Nettleton is back there, it will go over the side. That's Timothy Adoyne. Self passes. Curtin would dearly love to get one back to give them some hope as we enter the last five minutes of the third quarter. I think it's fair to say that Yannick Mulders in the UWA goal has had a pretty quiet night. Thankfully, it's not a cold one. This could be a chance at the foul stick there. It's cleared away. Didn't quite fall for Jacob Evans. Will be a long corner, though. UWA continuing to probe away. Timothy Adoyne does well initially, but it's back with UWA. Reverse stick, blocked by Zickler. Just cleared away as Ben Ashford was looking for his second there. And here's a chance now, maybe for uh, Curtin to raid forward. It's with uh, Reese Angwin. And Mulders does have something to do and does it well. That danger's not passed yet, though. It's a fresh air shot there from uh, Piggott. And a real let off for UWA. Just goes to show. You've got to be on your game at all moments. And credit to Yannick Mulders. We've just been saying he's not had much to do, but when he was called upon, he did it well. Goal then for Curtin. Could have put a cat among the pigeons. As it is, UWA still have this two-goal cushion. And two... Curtain players beating the turf with frustration when it didn't quite go their way. That last attack. I did sense that that was an opportunity. Could also take this opportunity to congratulate the Kookaburras as well. Of course, who won the first edition of the men's FIH Pro League last week, beating Belgium 3-2 in the grand final. And of course, the Hockey Roos fell just short in the women's edition, losing in heartbreaking fashion in to the Netherlands in the grand final. Finals ending 2-2 before the Netherlands won the shootout 4-3. Certainly, Australia can be proud of the Kookaburras and the Hockey Roos. As that's blasted home, and they've got one back. Have Curtin. It's a fine strike. Inside the circle. Confirmed the goal scorer, of course, it was Reese Angwin. And all of a sudden, Curtin University have a lifeline. But UWA back on the attack. 
second pick out, Jacob Evans. So the cheers went up around the Perth Hockey Stadium moments ago as Reese Angwin capitalized on that opportunity in the circle. Came to him quickly, but was onto it and smashed it home. And all of a sudden, could be game on here. Curtin come forward again, and all of a sudden, it's three against two. It's played out to the left-hand side. Could be a chance here for West. Reverse stick, and he's blasted it home. All of a sudden, two goals out of absolutely nowhere have got Curtin University back on level terms. Well, UWA look absolutely shell-shot. I don't think anyone was expecting that. Credit to Ryan West. He had it all to do when he came to him in the circle. And Yannick Mulders cannot believe it. All of a sudden, he's had to pick two out the back of the net. Surely, Curtin can't push forward and get a third here. Well, nothing would surprise you at the moment with this one. Credit to Curtin. They've been plugging away. The two goals have come against the run of uh, against the run of play, but they've taken them, and the tails are up now, and they're coming pushing forward again. Didn't quite fall for Timothy Adoin. Get the free hit and West self passes into the circle. He goes. Tails are up for short. Sure. Don't think Curtin want this quarter to end. Or maybe they do because UWA on the attack here with Daniel Timms down the right-hand side. Into the circle it goes. As Yao doesn't quite get rid of it. It's going to be a penalty corner right on the stroke of the th end of the third quarter. Six seconds left as the clock stops. This would be heartbreaking if... Well, heartbreaking for Curtin if UWA were to score here. They did strike right at the end of the second quarter to go 2 0 up. This would be another hammer blow for Curtin if they were to concede here. Zero from five penalty corners so far from UWA. As Lever Such is back on the turf now, so he will go down to inject. See what UWA can come up with here. This will be the last action. The Hooter has gone. So it will be the last action of this third quarter. As it's a goal, would you believe it, right on the stroke of three-quarter time. I think it was Carol Cronier who's blasted that one in from the penalty corner. Curtin certainly can take plenty of um, heart, if you like, from that third quarter for getting it back 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Just going to confirm the goal scorer. It was, in fact, Lawrence Bowden. So that is the end of the third quarter. It's Curtin at 2, UWA 3.
Welcome back to the Perth Hockey Stadium here at Curtin University. It's Curtin 2, UWA 3. The game really bursting into life in the third quarter. UWA were leading 2-0, but Curtin fighting back with two quick-fire goals. So going back to 2-2, only to suffer a real hammer blow on the stroke of the third quarter. As um, Lawrence Bowden scored a penalty corner to put UWA 3-2 up. As UWA have it again with Kobe Green out to this right-hand side to leave as such. Certainly that fight back in the third quarter will give Curtin some hope and confidence that they are still well and truly in this game. And a reminder to UWA that the job's not done yet. As they look to keep their good run of form going. Four wins from five. Here comes Green towards the edge of the circle. Green gets on with it, he's into the circle, flicks it back, Zickler's nowhere. But it will be a 16 for Curtin. Let off for them there. Alexandra Doyne brings it down, gets the free hit and gets on with it quickly. Looking for another free hit, but he's crowded out. And now UWA on the attack with Bowden. As Reese Angwin gives away the free hit there. He's not happy with it. Bit of a wry smile from Andrew Smith. Plays it out to leave as such. Cuts in field well. Edmonds does well, cut out the danger. Does well, Edmonds down this left-hand side, goes in field. Screams for a free hit from the Curtin faithful here at the Perth Hockey Stadium. They're not going to get it, but they're still on the attack. Down the right-hand side. Does it come forward again? Another free hit down by the corner. And they've got the first penalty corner of this encounter. It's taken a while, went to the fourth quarter. But now Curtin have a chance to level matters for the third time in the game. It's going to be Timothy Adoin to go down to the baseline to inject. I think one of the goal scorers, Ryan West, is on the edge of the circle, along with Alexander Adoin. It does look as though it will be West who will be doing the stopping. I'm guessing Alexander Adoin to have a shot. That's exactly how it's panned out. And it's going to be another penalty corner. Timothy Adoin goes to the huddle just to hear the plan for this second penalty corner. Well, credit to Curtin for making a real fist of this one. And 2 0, he didn't hold out much hope for them. But they come fighting back, showing great spirit. See what they can do here. As he's drilled in again, and it's 3 3. It is Alexander Adoin. He's blasted it home, straight past the uh, Yannick Mulders. And for the third time in this game, Curtin have leveled matters. Would you believe it? UWA, again, looking quite stunned. So all to play for in this final quarter. Six goal thriller so far. And you get the feeling there's more to come in this one. It is with Smith down the right hand side. Plays it to Ben Ashford into the circle. Curtin get it away, but it's with Kobe Green out to the right hand side. Leave as such. 
Looking for the free hit for the penalty corner. They're not going to get it. It will be a free hit for Curtin. It's with Nettleton. So Curtin, of course, looking to end what's well, been a pretty shocking run of form. Sequence of results. Could tonight be the night they do it? Would be an upset. Everyone would have been predicting a UWA victory this evening, and it was looking that way when they were 2-0 up. And here they come forward again with Daniel Timms into the circle. Could be a chance at the far post. Great save by Zickler. Often the hero coming up again. It was Harry Golding at the far post. It's going to be a long corner. Zickler again doing his job so well. See the urgency in UWA's playing out. Rocks by conceding an equaliser for the third time. Good twisting and turning by Timms. It's crowded out. Curtin will get the free hit with Nettleton. To the left-hand side, the doing. It's the free hit again. Got ten minutes left to go here at the Perth Hockey Stadium, and this one right on a knife edge. At three-three, difficult to say which way this one's going to go now. It's Curtin got a spring in their step. They believe they can go on and win this, and rightly so. The way they fought back, and here is Reese Angwin. It's well controlled. Sweeney couldn't quite get the shot away as West. Twisting and turning in the circle. It's well blocked by Mulders. And they're going to get the penalty corner. So one from two penalty corners so far for Curtin. And they're pushing to edge in front for the first time in the game. What an opportunity to do so here. Scored from the last one. And then they went to Alexander Adoin, who blasted it past Yannick Mulders. They'll be hoping for the same again. His brother, Timothy Adoin, goes to the baseline to inject. West again looks to be doing the stopping. And his Maverick Yao is there as well. Edmonds on the edge of the circle. Got options here, Curtin. But they do go to Adoin again. And he's passed it at home again. Would you believe it? It's his second of the night. And UWA, a shell shock. They're behind. It's Curtin who lead 4-3. And Alexander Adoin has got his second from another penalty corner. And I don't think even the most ardent Curtin supporter would have seen this coming, to be quite honest. And they were two down, but now they find themselves 4-3 in front as they look for just their third victory of the season so far. UWA are rattled now. They need to somehow find their composure. They've still got time. There's eight minutes left to go. As Cam Geddes has it down the right-hand side. Geddes again. Will be a free hit. Geddes self-passes. He's at the baseline, trying to make his way towards the edge of the circle, but Reese Angwin right in front of him. It will be a long corner. Tim Bunny. Comes back to Kobe Green. And to the right hand side, back to Bunny. Drills it into the circle. It's blocked by Timothy Adoin, will be a long corner. Kobe Green, switch play over to the left hand side, UWA. Into the circle again. It will be a 16 4 curtain. Who lead 
by four goals to three. The goal scorers, Reese Anguin, Ryan West and Alexander Adoin getting two. Ben Ashford, Daniel Timms and uh, Lawrence Bowden for UWA. Here's Timms now. Free hit will go the way of Curtin. Who are in the unfamiliar position, you have to say, of leading. And how do they play out the last six and a half minutes of this one? They'll be fighting for their lives to hold on to the lead for sure. As that's played forward, could be a chance possibly for Ryan West if he can keep it in over on the far side. He does well. Not got many options in front of him. But gets the long corner. Good play by Ryan West. As Alexander Adoin will take this long corner. UWA looking to hit on the counter counter attack with Harry Golden. He has to stop and come back to Geddes. Play switched over to the left hand side. Making good progress down the left, UWA. Into the circle. Oh, fantastic play by Reese Sanguin there to dribble out away from danger. And this is one for Edmonds to chase. Gonna just dribble over the side. Bunny gets on with it quickly. You can see UWA are in a real rush. Five minutes left to go. Trail 4-3 here. Harry Golden again down the right-hand side. As Golding will play this back in. Self-passes, the baseline, three hits. Golden again, toiling away, get the long corner. This is gonna be one or two final twists to this tail tonight. We'll soon find out as it goes into the circle again. Curtin defending for the lives, get it away. Only as far as Matthew Fisher though, who turns, plays it out to the left. Anywhere will do for Curtin, as it's blasted away. To Tim Bunny, you get the feeling this could be the story of the remaining four minutes of this encounter. UWA pushing for the equaliser and Curtin doing all they can just to sit in and pick up just their third victory of 2019. With Cam Geddes down the line to Golden. Long corner. Geddes over to the left hand side. Leave such into the circle. Goes crashing into Angwin. Free hit goes the way of Curtin. And a chance just to get their breath back. Compose themselves with just over three minutes left to play. Still time for UWA. Of course, we've seen right at the end of the second and third quarters, they struck with virtually the last passage of play. So Curtin have to be aware of that. They'd love another just to give themselves a two goal cushion. That's where Great play by Alexander Adoin, twisting and turning away. Just couldn't quite pick out his teammate. And maybe now Timothy Adoin raiding forward into the circle he goes. Looks to flick it across to Edmonds. Doesn't quite come off, but it's in the right area of the pitch as far as Curtin are concerned. But the free hit goes for UWA. There's an opportunity there for Curtin to kill it off, you would have thought. Doesn't quite fall for them. It's Andrew Smith gets the free hit right on halfway. We tick towards the last two minutes. 
here at the Perth Hockey Stadium. I don't think many would have been expecting this scoreline at this stage in the game. GWA it's into the circle. Chance as it's cut back, but it's wide. And the vast majority of the Perth Hockey Stadium breathed a huge sigh of relief there. Goal was gaping. Zickler was down. 16 for Curtin. As it runs through that. Calls for West to press there. It's back with UWA. Just over a minute for Curtin to hold out in this one. Good play by Edmonds. The free hit will go the way of UWA. To the displeasure of the crowd here this evening. Just with Kobe Green into the last minute. Anxious moments here. Over with Cam Geddes into the circle. It's going to be a long corner. Will be taken by Kobe Green. Last chance saloon for UWA. That just skips through. Although it's going to be another long corner. This has got a touch on the way through. Free hit on the edge of the circle. Over the side. Into the last 20 seconds. It's curtain four, UWA three. Is there going to be one final sting? To the circle it goes and no touch on that one. And a huge sigh of relief around the Perth Hockey Stadium. And there's a few pats on the back going around. As they know, that's it. And the Hooter has gone. And it is Curtin University who have picked up their third victory of the season. Well, no one was really expecting an upset this evening as UWA came in as hot favourites on a hot run of form themselves. But Curtin have shown their resolve. Goals by Reese Angwin, Ryan West and a brace by Alexander Adoyne doing the damage. Goals for UWA came from Ben Ashford, Daniel Timms and Lawrence Bowden. So a rare victory, but you have to say a deserved one for Curtin. The final score at the Perth Hockey Stadium tonight it finished Curtin University 4, UWA 3.